The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Welcome one and all to Bar Haven United Church. We're located in Ottawa, Ontario, and uh, Bar Haven is a suburb of Ottawa. So we're kind of south, but we're continuing to grow. My name is Reverend Carla Van Dalen, and it is wonderful that we have found each other today. Tomorrow, things will be opening up in Ontario. And I know a lot of us are looking forward to perhaps getting some necessities that maybe the government didn't consider necessities, but that we're running out of. Um, anyway, so as you go out, as you start venturing into places perhaps that you weren't before, please be safe, but also enjoy yourself and enjoy this beautiful summer that is unfolding all around us. So in our service today, friends, we continue to praise our God for the diversity that we see all around us in this world and for the very nature of God, who is about wholeness within diversity. And really, that is what the Trinity is all about. As people of faith, our role is to work with God, to reshape the world, to reform this world into a place that better reflects God's call for justice, compassion, and respect for all people and for all of creation. Unfortunately, we have fallen short of this great calling. While there is much beauty in this world, there is also an evil of our own making. Recently, we have heard about the rediscovery of the graves of children at a former residential school in Kamloops, but there's also been the, the terrible tragedy, the deliberate mowing down of a Muslim family in London, Ontario last Sunday. And there's also racism that has been directed at people of Asian descent right here in our own community. This world is far from perfect. Our country and our communities are far from perfect. We can sit in lament, but at some point we need to get up to wipe our tears and to dust ourselves off and to begin to work together to create a world that reflects God's dream for all of us, which is about wholeness because of our diversity. So today we offer one small step along the road of reconciliation and healing. Peace doesn't happen overnight, but if we work together, if we truly believe that God loves us and each one of us, and that we act alongside God to bring a better world, then we can indeed bring it right to our doorsteps. So let us worship wherever we may find ourselves as a community of faithful people. We begin by lighting our Christ candle. The light of Christ infuses the universe, all living things, all inanimate matter, all our relations are knitted together with the divine at their core. May our souls burn a little bit brighter when we realize that in our neighbor, God is present. May it be so with Christ's help. Amen. Before we begin our call to worship, if you are following along at home, let us just take a few moments to breathe in the light of Christ, to breathe in wholeness, and to breathe out whatever may be sitting and we need to get rid of on this day. So let us just take a few moments to sit in God's glory and in God's light. Let us begin. Welcome. Welcome to worship. Although we are apart, we are united in this time of praise and thanksgiving. Let us glorify the name of our loving God. Welcome. Welcome to God's peace. In this time, may we put aside our urgency and anxiety 
and resist the distractions of our fear. Let us open ourselves to receive healing of our caring God. Welcome. Welcome to God's love. At the height of our joy or the depths of our despair, in the sunshine of our hope and the shadows of our shame, God's love seeks us out. Let us experience how we are always made welcome by our inclusive God. Let us pray. Creating loving God. In Christ, you show us a way to heal and to shape a new day. And you entrust us with the gifts of faith, forgiveness, compassion, trust, and love. In the changing seasons, in the changing world, your love is constant. May our witness and prayer sustain and support goodness, justice, and peace in our worship and work, enough for this day and for all the generations to follow us. Amen. to see you. I haven't seen you in such a long time. Oh, now I've just heard that you won't be in school until September. Yes, I heard, but I know you'll be doing lots of learning to the end of the school year, right? <laughs> well, I hope so, because you know, Thumper has had lots of homework as well. Now, you wouldn't think Bunny School has lots of homework, or perhaps you think there's certain courses like making stew with um, with carrots or like carrot cake or like cooking classes and things like that or how not to get caught in your neighbor's garden but no he's been working on lots of other things I think he's around here somewhere just a sec Thumper what are you doing down there oh, I think he's having a nap oh Thumper Thumper you have to get up your friend is here yeah your friend is here oh <clears throat> I know Oh, what's going on, Thumper? Usually you don't take afternoon naps. What's that? You've been doing a whole bunch of research and your eyes are getting tired. Oh, I know that happens with me too when I'm looking at the computer. That's right. And what's that? You want me to read some of the things? So what have you been learning about? Oh, you've been learning about <clears throat> 
the first people on the land here. And what are they called? That's right, the Indigenous people. So you want me to read for your friend uh, some stuff here? Oh, and what's that? Oh, he wants me to read it because his penmanship isn't very good. His little paws get sore holding the pen. Okay, so I'll read them. Okay, so let's see. Oh, very good. June is Indigenous History Month. You learned about that, right? So let's see what else. Oh, the Algonquin people have lived here for thousands of years. And this is their traditional territory, the Ottawa River watershed. Well, that's interesting. Oh, and here you even have a map. Wow, you have a visual. Well, we'll look at that a little bit more later. And I see you have some other things here too. This whole map is the Ottawa River watershed. There's the Ottawa River and the Gatineau River. And there's Manawaki and the Ottawa. Wow. Okay, we're going to look at that a little bit more after. Very good. Well, your writing may not be good, but your coloring's pretty good. I know, you like coloring better than writing. So let's see here. Um, Algonquin people are part of the Anishinaabe. They're related to Algonquin indigenous peoples. Um, and some others in the group are uh, the Sioux, the Odawa, Ojibwa, and Oji Cree. Many years ago, this whole area um, was home to huge pine trees and that had many birds and animals and fish and rich in wildlife. What's that? Oh yes, I think it would be a very special place to live, especially for bunnies. Yes. Um, they use the rivers as highways and they use birch bark canoes to carry items to visit neighbors, to trade, and sometimes they come all the way up from Lake Superior to the East Coast. Wow, what's that? Their arms must be tiring from paddling. I, I think they took some breaks, but that, that's very observant. That's right. Um, let's see. In summer, the families would gather together and camp along the rivers. And also to prepare for winter, they'd hunt and they'd smoke the fish, planting beans, corn, tobacco, and gathering berries. The ceremonies, they had big ceremonies. Yeah, what's that? You like a good party with lots of food? Well, who doesn't, right? And these ceremonies were get together with friends and where decision making happened all the time. Now in late fall, some groups of hunting families moved up the rivers to their hunting territories and they traveled with snowshoes and toboggans. What's that? You always have snowshoes with you? What are you talking about? Oh, just look at your feet. Well, I guess they are built in snowshoes. That's right, okay. <laughs> Um, they hunted large animals like moose and everyone helped to cut it up and uh, to eat and to process the hides and other parts for their clothing and nothing went to waste. They used everything. And uh, children, just like you, were very special and the whole village would take care of all of them. So the land and waters were sacred to the Algonquin peoples. They honored and respected the land and waters and all the creatures and all the plants. Um, they understood that people depended on the land and the water and all the plants and all the animals to survive for food, for shelter, for clothing, for tools, for their canoes. You did a lot of work, Thumper, but you know what? I think Liz Nyman helped you a lot. What's that? You'll have to send her a thank you card? I think we better, yes. Um, let's see what else here. Um, they took care of the land and water and kept them clean and healthy and only took what they needed and left the rest for others, including the animals and birds for the next generation of people. And they used to give a gift to the animal they had killed or the plants they had picked to thank the creator for food and the other things that the animals, the plant had provided. And they had wonderful teachers, teachings from elders about how to live a good and a good life. So for example, the teachings of the seven grandfathers was honesty, humility, respect, courage, wisdom, love, and truth. What's that? It's something like the Ten Commandments in a way. I guess you're right. That is very good, Thumper. That's right. There's wisdom in all religions. That's right. Um, so the first European settlers would not have survived if the, if the Algonquin peoples had not helped them to survive um, because they had been here for thousands of years. That's right. Oh, and one, what's that? I forgot one more thing. 
what's that? Especially about the people that live here today? That's right. So, so now there's 10 federally registered Algonquin communities. There's one in Ontario, and that's on Golden Lake near Pembroke. And there's nine in Quebec. And the closest is uh, uh, Kittigan Zibi Ashinabeg near Manawaki. And then, of course, there's lots of people of Algonquin descent, Algonquin people that live um, in communities all across the territory. So let's just go over here to see the dots. So anywhere there's a brown dot is, um, is a community, is a registered community. Yeah. This is a very nice map. I think the Sunday school children did this a couple years ago. But, oh, okay, but you, uh, you helped uh, tidy it up a little bit with Liz? Oh, very good, very good. Well, your project is well underway. But, you know, I think we have something else. Because um, it's important to learn about the past, but also about the people right now. The people that live here right now. And our relationship with them. So, we have something special. Because of the sad uh, news that we got last, um, <clears throat> I guess it was uh, just over a week ago, about uh, the discovery of the graves of children, we decided to have something very special here at the church, a way of people um, remembering, but um, perhaps even saying a prayer for them and for all the people that might be hurting in the world. So we decided to put together at the front of the church, so along Jockville, under the, um, sort of under the cross and under the cedars, we're going to have a garden of hearts for the children. So if you at home want to do something, even just a small gesture such as this, I invite you to get a stick, whatever size you want, make a heart, whatever size, whatever color you want, and we just put a little bit of plastic on it, but you could even put, for example, duct tape on it or something, just to make it a little bit more waterproof. And if you want to write a little prayer on it, um, sort of whatever you're thinking about at the moment because there's so much going on in, in the world and sometimes we just have to come together and show our, um, our care and our solidarity and this might be something small but so that the whole community can see. What's that? You want to start making one right away? Well, we will do that right after your report is done because you still have homework to do. Okay. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you. It was so good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Um, I, I think Thumper just wanted a little diversion before he got back to his work, but it was really good to see you. How about we have a little prayer before we, uh, before we get on with our day? Okay, Thumper? Okay, so put your, put your hands or your paws together, bow your head, and repeat after me. Loving God, thank you for making each of us unique Thank you for all of our differences that reflect the beauty of God. Help us to respect and to love one another, especially when it is hard. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, well, hope to see you soon. I hope you have a, a very wonderful summer and uh, don't forget to do your homework. School's not done yet. <laughs> okay. All right. From Thumper and I, thank you. Bye. Bye. Let us pray. God of fresh starts and new beginnings. <clears throat> God of hope and promise, flesh and spirit entwined to become one with you through Jesus Christ. As heaven and earth connect, so too may we, through responding to your word, increase our depth of understanding as we receive the words of scripture this day. God of eternal life, teach us to keep on the path of righteous living, which so many have traveled before. Amen. <clears throat> Our first reading is from the Hebrew Scriptures text of Isaiah, chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. And we are reading verses from the New Revised Standard Version. A shoot shall come out from the stalk of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. 
The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be the fear of the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness so shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, the young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Our second reading is from Paul's epistle to the Corinthians, and we're reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 11 to 21. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we'll, sh we'll try to persuade others. But we ourselves, we ourselves are well known to God. And I hope that we are also well known to your consciousness. We are not commanding ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity, the opportunity to boast about us, so that you might be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in their heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might no longer for themselves, but for who died for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. And all this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we, we might become the righteousness of God. Our readings come to a close with a reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Chapter 5, verses 21 to 24. And Jesus said, You have heard that it was said in those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. For the truth which holds our living, for the truth with, which challenges us and changes us, for the truth that sets us free. Thanks be to God. Friends, let us pray. Creating God, help us to hear the words of wisdom that you have for this day. May we come to appreciate the diversity that you have woven into this world and come to respect the wisdom that you have planted in all peoples and in all of creation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Today I want to begin with a little story of sorts that I'm sure that many of you probably can relate to. Once upon a time, there was a large family reunion of sorts, and each side of the family hadn't seen the other side, other set of relations, in a very, very, very long time. The out-of-country branch of the family didn't bother to send a card, telephone, or even text it to let the local family know that they were coming for an extended visit. Now, once they arrived, the, the newcomers to the family dressed a little bit funny, had strange table manners, and liked to go around with lots, lots of facial hair. And for a time, everyone seemed to get along. They even worked together on big projects. Often, often visiting relatives would just drop in, unannounced. And so the local relatives would supply them with food, loan them warm clothing, and even build extensions onto their homes to accommodate this new found branch of the family tree. But bit by bit, these newly discovered family relations didn't know when to leave and kept postponing their trip home longer and longer. They said things like, our vehicle broke down and we're waiting for new parts to be made, or it isn't a good time to start a long voyage home. Now things started to get tense when more and more relations turned up and started raiding the fridge, <clears throat> hogging the TV remote, and leaving their dirty clothes all over the place. And sure enough, it was only a matter of time before a fight broke out <clears throat> over whom would pay for the rug that was spoiled when the out-of-town relatives had a little too much to eat and drink. Little by little, what started out as a family reunion had disintegrated into a war of words that ended in a lack of respect and understanding between the families that lasted for generations. So we might wonder, could something slowly, in time, something that had been so painful, could have after a lot of prayer, could something actually come about this? Could a new family reunion even be considered? Where would one even start? Well, this little story of sorts, one that I said that probably many of you can relate to, because many of us probably have had family members that we haven't spoken to for many years because of some real hurt that occurred between members, and sometimes we lose touch with them for reasons, perhaps, that we can no longer even remember. Families are like that. But this story is also about our relationship with the Indigenous people in this country. They are our relations, and we are theirs. But for so many reasons, we haven't invited each other to the family reunions. And because of our, of our hurtful and painful past history together, when the invitations are sent to hold a family reunion, both sides of the family are usually a little bit reluctant to accept the invitation when the offer is made. Now, over the years, the United Church of Canada has begun the slow and painful process of building up those relationships. Much has been done, but much, much more needs to be done. This week, in Life and Work, or through our outreach ministry here at BUC, or in our Indigenous library that we also have here at the church, you can read about the steps that the United Church has taken and is taking in our slow process of building new relationships, building new bridges. This includes an apology that was given by the United Church in 1986, up to the creation of the official Indigenous Church with its own structure within the United Church of Canada. In addition, one of those small steps was taken in August of 2012 at the 41st General Council of the United Church when we acknowledged the presence and spirituality of Indigenous peoples in the United Church of Canada by revising the United Church crest. The crest changes included incorporating the colors often associated with the Indigenous medicine wheel. The medicine wheel, which reflects respect for diversity, 
and interdependence is often represented in the four traditional colors of yellow, red, black, and white, which incorporate important teachings from the four directions, the four stages of life, and the four seasons. The placement of these colors will vary according to the traditions of the nation. The medicine wheel teaches us to seek balance in the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects of the circle of life. Now the crest change also included the addition of a Mohawk phrase, which means all my relations. In this morning's reading from Matthew, Jesus warns us that our thoughts are just as important as our actions. That before we can come before God and worship, we need to make amends with our brothers and sisters. And only then can worship, can we approach worship with a true heart. We cannot come before God with truly open hearts if we know that others suffer, whether it's from our own actions or inactions of our own. Regardless, if they are suffering, we too hurt. It is for this reason and for so many others that it is imperative that we honor and respect our neighbors by listening to their stories and life experiences of our Indigenous brothers and sisters. Each thought, each prayer, each small little action that we make to acknowledge the living legacy of those who have lived on this land and in this country is important. And it speaks volumes of what we as a church hold important. And so as a next small step on that road of reconciliation, the outreach ministry of BUC offers the opportunity for us to think of what it might mean for us to offer a land acknowledgement at some of our events, meetings, and worship services. Now, some of you may be familiar from, from your work or may perhaps even other volunteer opportunities that you engage in, familiar with a land acknowledgement. It is a modern version of an ancient custom that many Indigenous cultures use to acknowledge relationships to space and to place. Since the final report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was published, more and more non-Indigenous communities are exploring the importance of territorial or land acknowledgements. A land acknowledgement is a formal statement that recognizes the unique and enduring relationship that exists between Indigenous peoples and their traditional territories, the land that they've called home since long before the arrival of Europeans. However, it is much more than that. In the process of creating a statement, in the process of hearing it, the writer, the speaker, and the listener can be opened to a new understanding of our relationship to the land and to one another. A land acknowledgement is not meant to comfort, but to confront. To confront us with history that maybe we haven't heard before, or are even comfortable hearing. And that is fine. That is okay. I recently read in an article that the work of justice and reconciliation is trauma work. And I've never heard it put that way before, but it is true. The truth breaks, breaks us, breaks our assumptions, our ignorance, and in time, hopefully, reshapes us into something new and, and different from the past. Some see a land acknowledgement as one small act of reconciliation on our long road of new beginnings. As part of the United Church, it can be for us a way to live into the Church's first apology to Indigenous peoples in 1986 and the second in 1998 to residential school survivors, their families and communities. To recognize the land on which we worship and live out our calling as disciples of Jesus is an expression of gratitude and appreciation to those in whose territory we reside and a way of honoring the indigenous people who have been living and working on the land since time immemorial. So now I offer you a chance to think, to reflect, perhaps even to put me on pause and to have a conversation with those around you. 
I'd invite you to think about a few key things. What does a land acknowledgement mean to you? What might it mean for this church community? And lastly, what might it mean for those who are Indigenous who hear it? I invite you to come back when you're ready. If you need more time, certainly go ahead and take it. That's one of the, one of the pros of, of having it recorded. You can put me on pause. But anyway, welcome back. So today I'd like to offer one possibility, one possibility of the wording for a land acknowledgement. This one was written by a small group of members of the outreach ministry with suggestions from Reverend Diane Cardin and a number of other people from within the church. It is, in our, it is our hope that in time this acknowledgement will be adapted and changed as we reflect on our commitment to the first peoples of this land. So here it is. As we begin our worship as a congregation of the United Church of Canada, we acknowledge that we are gathered virtually in our homes on a very small part of the beautiful, unceded, and unsurrendered traditional territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe peoples. We commit to better understanding of their long history of living in harmony with the land, including their deep spiritual connections to the land, the waters, the animals, birds, fish, insects, and plant life in the vast watershed of the Kitchissippi or Great River, now called the Ottawa. The Kichisipi Anishinaabe, or people of the Great River, welcomed European visitors and were generous in showing them how to live on this land. But the visitors, who were uninvited guests to this land, took advantage of this generosity and became landowners without war, purchase, or treaty, ripped resources from the land and tried to wipe out a sacred way of life. We struggle to understand the injustice brought upon the Algonquin and Anishinaabe peoples which still persist. The United Church has been complacent in diminishing and devaluing Indigenous peoples, including children. We lament. The Church has made two apologies and now we are attempting to live into this work as we work towards reconciliation and healing. We give thanks for the generous Indigenous people within the Indigenous United Church who are willing to help us walk forward in a good way. We must look for ways to be in respectful relationships with all our Indigenous neighbours who have so much to teach us as we navigate our troubled world, including reconciling our own relationship with the land and waters. Here ends the land acknowledgement. The reality, my friends, is that our relations, members of our extended family, are hurting. May we do our small part to bring wholeness and healing to those among us. And so I leave you with one last little story. A Haida legend explains that long ago, no divisions existed between humans, animals, and spirits. All things of the earth, sky, and water were connected, and all beings could pass freely between them. The raven was a trickster full of supernatural power. He stole the sun from his grandfather and made the moon and stars from it. The raven created lakes and rivers and filled the lands with trees. He divided night and day and then pulled the ties into a rhythm. He filled the streams with fresh water, scattered the eggs of salmon and trout, and placed animals in the forest. The first human was hiding in a giant clamshell, and Raven released him onto the beaches and gave humans fire. Raven disappeared and took with him the powers of the spirit world to communicate and connect with humans. 
Here ends the story. Many traditions, not just Christianity, but many traditions from around the world hold that creation was once one. There was no division. But once diversity existed, differences are usually seen as liabilities, instead as a gift from the creator. As each of us, as you and I grow in our faith and explore the richness of God's gifts for us, may we come to understand that we are all one tribe, one family under God. May it be so, and thanks be to God. Each of us are blessed with abundance, abundance of a variety of gifts by our creator, our sustainer, and by our redeemer. So however you are sharing your gifts this past week, this past month or year, today, what are you sharing with your community, with your loved ones, and with those that you meet when you're out and about? Let us just think about that for a moment before we present our gifts to God. Please join me in the dedication. <clears throat> Lord, you have called us to join you as co-workers and co-heirs of the kingdom. We take this opportunity to demonstrate our allegiance to you. We proclaim you Lord of all. You are Lord of our families, our finances, and our future. May we give our gifts with a heart of thanksgiving. And we dedicate these gifts to ensuring the kingdom of God brings hope and healing to our world. Amen. Whenever we pray together, we bring our true selves. We bring our true selves and offer what is in our hearts up into the light of God. God's light, which is of healing and wholeness. And when we offer people into that light, God knows what they need. And so our prayers don't need to be overly wordy. So at any time in this prayer, which we call prayers of the community, at any time that you want to stop and continue your conversation with God, go right ahead. And whenever you're ready, come on back. So friends, family, let us pray. We believe in God, creator of all, that is within us and all that surrounds us, shaper of the bonds between us as peoples and among the whole of creation, the beings that walk, that swim and crawl, that fly overhead, the, th the beings that have sheltered us, sustained us, and silently watched over for generations. We believe in the creator of relationships meant to be lived out in equity, mutuality, and respect. Today we see that your creation is fracturing. The land seeks rest even as it labors to sustain us. Relations hurl threats at each other across political borders. Leaders assert that theirs is the only way and the ones who are afflicted most by political decisions have no say in decision-making. In a time of reconciliation, of binding up wounds, we fear an unraveling. We've pledged to bind up wounds together, but we do it so lightly that there is no healing. We say reconciliation, reconciliation, but is there reconciliation? We believe in Jesus, who questioned those with power, quieted those with loud voices, empowered those who were silenced to speak. We learn from Jesus, who overturned tables that were unjustly set and gave a seat to those who were always shut out. Today we seek to do as Jesus did, 
to make room as Indigenous peoples assert their right to be at the table, as they assert their right to consent, to say yes, to build up a new relationship rooted in covenant, not colonization, where we can all feast together. We seek ways of building relationships with all our relations, with our Islamic neighbors who are targeted for worshiping you, O God, in a different way. And especially today, we pray for the family of Salman Afzal, his wife, Mahilda, their daughter, Yumna, and Afzal's mother, who was also killed last Sunday. We pray for the health of the family's nine-year-old son who was injured but survived. And we also pray for Nathaniel, Nathaniel Veltman and his family as he faces criminal, criminal charges in their killing. Gracious God, we pray for respect and understanding between all peoples. We hold up and stand alongside our LGBTQ plus family and friends as they celebrate Pride Month Help us to stand up and alongside our Asian neighbors and all who are experiencing racism and violence in our communities. May we remember that following Jesus is not easy, but requires us to take a stand when we see injustice and hatred. We also pray this day for ourselves, for the hurts and the sorrows we carry but also for the joys we experience. And in the silence, we offer you now our innermost thoughts. Oh, Holy One, in this time of reconciliation, of binding up wounds, we dare to hope, to find creative solutions together. We say reconciliation, reconciliation that all might be healed and our relationships transformed. We ask this in the name of the risen Christ, our brother and savior. Amen. And we gather up all of our prayers, saying together the prayer that has united Christians down through the centuries and across time. As we say together, our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. And when you leave this time, may you see the face of Christ in everyone that you meet, and may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. I pray that it is true in your life and in mine. And as we go forth, we do so with the blessing of the one that is known to us as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And let the people say, Amen. Friends, may you be safe. I'm so happy that so many people are now able to get their second vaccination. So just be safe out there. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to one another. And we shall see you again next week. God bless and take care. Thank you.